Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Rusty Gaylord. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I'm so grateful to have you here today on Savvy Broadcasting. How are you? I am great. It's great to be with you, Christina. You betcha. It is great to have you here. You're a transformational coach, a motivational speaker, and today we're going to talk about the power of vision. So important. So many people have this idea of, I want to be someone else. I want to grow as a person. And they're not quite certain, how do I take the initial vision I have of where I want to be or who I want to be and then make it a reality? But we're going to go into all that. But first, share a little bit about your backstory with our audience. Absolutely. So, uh, I followed for the first 25 years of my life, a very standard, what I would call corporate career. I went to a great school. I, you know, my first job was good. I ended up going to business school at Stanford, which was what brought me to California. And I've been here for the last 20 years, 13 of which I spent working at Apple. I was very successful there. I was leading the forecast process globally for all of Apple products. So I had a big role. And by all means, anybody looking from the outside would say, you've got it made. Mm -hmm. Right. Good job. Amazing company. I had a great team. I had pretty good hours. I'm paid well. I'm stable. All of those things. Mm -hmm. But there was a part of me that just wasn't fulfilled. You know, I wanted more, but I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what it was, but there was, there was a desire for something. Mm -hmm. It was through working with a coach that I came to understand what that was and how to satisfy that, which mm -hmm. ended up in me leaving this job at Apple to go off and start my own business as a transformational coach. Yeah. But, you know, a, a journey like that is, it was challenging and it was scary. And it took some help to figure out what was it that was going to help me move forward. Mm -hmm. So that's what I look forward to talking about today, because it really is about having a vision and being able to walk into that. But first of all, developing a vision. That's a good point. It's interesting. I hired a coach, oh my God, 15 years ago, and I was in corporate like you and doing strictly super corporate work. Now I'm working more with media companies. I like it a lot more, a lot more my style. Um, but at the time it was super corporate -y and I was feeling really stifled because it's funny, I worked at a corporation. I used to have really spiky blonde hair and wear these like sweaters that were really like, um, I killed a uh, cookie monster or something. And people, <laughs> people used to say, you don't look like you should be an accountant really uh, because I'm my personality is so vivacious and so not like corporate. So anyway, I, I was really feeling unfulfilled like you and I hired a coach and she said, so what do you love? I'm like, uh, I don't know. So the first thing was figuring out and getting in touch. What did I love? What were my passions? I didn't recall anymore. I think you can speak to this. I think a lot of people lose touch. What are the things that really jive you that make you happy? And I think people lose touch with that. Well, yes, I totally agree with you. And, and there's a couple, a couple of, uh, reasons for that. And there's a couple of things to do about it. The first real reason for it is that we're, we're trained to, to think through things, right? Anybody who works in a corporation, anybody who's a smart person, you over index on your intelligence. Mm. Because if you're, if you're going to go up and give a presentation for a company, you better have thought through the pros and the cons and the rationale for why you're going to do this. You do a, a return on investment analysis. You, you do all of that stuff. Because, and the expectation is that you're very rational in your decision making. Mm. But when it comes to something that you love, that's not a rational decision. Any more than when you go to a restaurant, it's a rational decision what you pick off the menu. You don't analyze calorie counts and nutrition a lot. Usually. When <laughs> right, well, usually. <laughs> but even if you do that, you still can't make a decision based on that. The decision is based on what do I want to eat right now? Mm -hmm. And finding out what you love is about being willing to shift the way you make a decision. You have to shift mm -hmm. from analyzing it thinking it through to going with, what do I feel like doing? Mm. And the other important thing is there's no right answer to that. And there's no one answer to that. Every person is different. And the whole point of having a vision is that it's something that pulls you forward. It doesn't have to be the one and only. And that people can get really stuck on that, this idea that, well, I've got to get the right answer because if I don't get the right answer, I'm not going to be able to move forward. Yeah. And, and that's a really good point. Uh, when I, we got, when I got started with my coach, I was like, I had no idea what direction. She's like, here's my thing. Just start journaling, journaling, your feelings, journaling, putting it out there. Remember things from when your childhood that you got really excited about and happy about just write. 
And I'm not a great writer, but I, I took her advice. And I started writing. And through that writing, one night, something came to mind. It was a friend of mine being um, interviewed on a podcast. N didn't know what the heck a podcast was. This is almost 10 years ago. And inside of me, everything screamed, you need to do that. And I was like, what? Interview people? And uh, lo and behold, uh, years later, this has become a business and, and I'm doing what I love. But it's that stepping into and being willing to not think it through, but feel it through. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I want to applaud you because you did something super important, which is when you listened to that part of you that resonated with something. Yeah. Right? We all have that when we eat, whether we see it in the outside world or we just imagine it. Mm -hmm. There's a part of us that get, like our heart speeds up a little bit. You know, we get that, our energy goes up. We feel mm -hmm. excited. You can physically feel different, but most people will talk themselves out of that. Why? Well, Why because it's risky. It's un, it's unsafe. It's different from what I've done in the past. Oh my gosh. Who am I to do a, like, take your example. Who am I to do a podcast? Or in my case, who am I to be a coach for goodness sake? I went to business school and I've been a corporate guy in finance. And now I'm going to go from left brain finance numbers, quantitative stuff to right brain coaching. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what it is? The, the for, I hear, heard my first podcast. It was horrible, like comparatively <laughs> speaking to today. Yeah. But you know, it's the 10,000 hours in practice. I knew the moment I heard her being interviewed, something inside of me screamed, you need to do this. And it was like electric, electric bolt inside of me. I was like, Zoom. you need to do this. And yeah. I was super excited. And within five minutes, I, I did this little Google search, found uh, blog talk radio and said, let's just try it. I went out there and made my first broadcast, you know, just played around with the system. And, but you know, today more than ever with the modern age, we have those kind of easy um, technology that can often help you do something or try something you've never tried. Let's say uh, you get really excited by seeing people uh, lift weights and you've never even thought about lifting weights. All right, start watching bodybuilding.com. Start integrating yourself into different areas to find out more about it. Now, all right, let's say you're now on this path like, oh, boom, I want to be a bodybuilder, but hey, um, little flabby around the area. Where do you begin to build that vision where now I am that? How do you begin to make that reality? Well, there, there's two, two things. And one is something you were just pointing to, which is so important. Most people think you go from zero to 100 in the snap of the fingers. <laughs> and that's not how it works. We all know that. Uh -huh. You go from zero to 100 by taking a bunch of little steps. You go oh. to one, then to two, then to three. So just even being a, a podcaster, right? You start by doing the first one. You start by doing trying it. And the same would be true with a bodybuilder or with anything else. You don't quit your job and just go whole hog all in one direction, you, you take some little steps along the way. So that's the first thing, which is how do you get started? You get started by getting started. Uh, and you don't have to assume that you've got to have all the pieces worked out and the whole, ma the whole path mapped out in front of you. You never do. You take the first step anyway. So that's the first part. Yeah. But the yeah. second way in which vision, having a vision is really important because it gives you a direction. That's the first way. But the second way it's really important is that it you can identify with what does it feel like to be that person. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is, um, it's, it's, it's something you do internally. It's not something you do externally. Now, now, and, you know, Russell, uh, can I ask you something about that? Rusty, because there'll be people who say, you know, I, I want to be a teacher or a doctor or whatever, but how do they begin to take on that persona where they can actually feel like a teacher or whatever it is they want to be? Because I think that's the hardest part, taking on the persona and saying, I am that. Yes. And that's, and that's the, that's one of the real powerful parts of the vision. Mm -hmm. The way you do that is you imagine it, you imagine yourself in that position. If you've ever watched um, uh, like Olympic sports, especially kind of short intensity duration Olympic sports, I'm thinking about snowboarding, for example, mm -hmm. if you watch those guys before they go, you just stand there and watch them at the moment. They're at the top of the hill. You can see them thinking, what do you think they're thinking about? They are visualizing themselves successfully doing their run before they even get started. All really high performance athletes do this. It's, it's, it's pro scientifically proven to work. You visualize yourself doing that thing successfully. So if you wanna be a doctor or if you wanna be a teacher, you can visualize yourself, picture yourself standing there in front of the classroom. What age kids are you teaching? What subject are you teaching? What does the room look like? Is it decorated? Are kids all sitting in desks or are they at tables working together on a project? Yeah. You come up with that vivid picture in your mind, picture yourself doing it. And it's almost like you're practicing it in your head. Yeah. 
these, you know, this is fascinating. I heard pilots back in World War II didn't have simulators the way we do today. And so what they would do, they would sit in bed with like a, you know, a little plunger, you know, that you have for the toilet. And they would practice, you know, doing the, the air flying in their head with maybe a plunger and sitting in the you know, bed, air flying in their head. And it was really, really helpful. They were actually simulating, but in their head. And it really was beneficial for actually when they had to go out and do the real thing. And and so today we think, oh, yeah, we have to get on a flight simulator or whatever. But actually, we have everything right up here. We can do the simulations in our head. You are totally right about that. You, that's all you need, really, is all you need is your head to, <laughs> to imagine it vividly. So one, I will tell you that one of the most powerful determinants of how you show up in the world is your self-image and how you see yourself. If you see yourself as the kind of, if like, let's just take the teacher example, right? Okay. Well, I would love to be a teacher, but you know, I, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm not good enough with people. I'm not comfortable talking to other people or standing up in front of other people. Mm -hmm. If you grasp onto that belief that you're not comfortable being in front of other people, that will become your reality. And it's going to be way harder to bust through that and stand in front of someone. But if you're doing that, that mental exercise of practicing, it doesn't have to be fancy, like you said, like the plunger example. I mean, it can be just in your head, but you picture yourself doing it. You're starting to train yourself to say, yeah. oh, I am that person. I yeah. am that person who stands up in front of other people and teaches and leads and organizes a whole classroom. And the more you see yourself as that person, the more natural it becomes. And it's just going to flow out of you more naturally in your behavior. Yeah. And, and that is so true. I mean, when I first got started um, and I had that vision, oh, you need to do this podcasting thing. I called up all my friends and said, can you be my test subject? Cause I've never done this. I'm uncomfortable with it, whatever. I just started interviewing people that I knew, like, let me just try you, you know, and, and interview. But, you know, over time doing, it, I used to also script out everything because I was very uncomfortable that I'd make a mistake. So I had everything written down. Um, but now the reason why the, the, the show changed to Savvy Business Life Unscripted is because I found that after about six months, I threw away my paperwork and was just like, boom, head on into this person and we're dialoguing and it wasn't necessary. It was unscripted. And people were like, I like that you're unscripted because it was just natural. And, that, and that's what it is. I just kind of, I became the role over time by just practicing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's those two things that go together is you continue to envision yourself advancing and being steps ahead of where you are, because that's mm -hmm. internally pulling you forward. Yeah, yeah. And of course you take the action. You have to take the action too. Mm -hmm. And both of those things work together and, and you just, you make all sorts of progress. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. So now you begin to have the vision, whatever it is, you've taken those small steps towards it. Now, a big part of vision, I, I feel is really getting on board the people around you. And, and one thing that started to pull me down in the beginning is I was also working from corporate still and starting this whole podcasting thing, but people were like, that's not who you are. You're the shy person that, you know, people saw me as the old Christina. And it was hard to step out when the people around me were not envisioning the new vision that I was envisioning. Share your perspective on that. Yeah, I mean, the people around you are essential. I mean, there's there's no other way to say it. I mean, there's there's been, um, I don't remember who said it exactly, but it was something like you are the average of the five people who are closest to you in terms yeah. of your salary, in terms of your health, in mm -hmm. terms of your happiness. I mean, in all of these different dimensions, which makes a ton of sense because we all want to fit in, right? We all want to get along well with the people around us. So we, we kind of blend in. Mm -hmm. um, so it, having the right people around you makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I've heard, which I just, I love this idea, which is, you, you describe people who are watching you along this journey. And they said, well, that's not the old Christina. That's not the Christina that I know. Yeah. But if you just meet someone that new day, they don't know the old you. They only know the way you're showing up. Yeah. And so if you're making a shift about who you are and your energy, which is way more than just your, your vision for what you're doing, but it's mm -hmm. about how you're showing up and how you're living your life, who you are in the world, mm -hmm. how you interact with people, how happy you are, all of that. If you meet someone new along that journey, that's just how they know you. They don't know any past version of you. You might share that as a story, but they're going to know you as the new version, which I just think is so magical. It's just, you know, it might feel a little uncomfortable yeah. to you because even yeah. for you, there's the old you and the new you. But when you meet those people, that's just, they, they bring that out in you because mm -hmm. that's the you that they know. Yeah. And that is such a great thing. What I found for me is a lot of the family and friends that were really close to me just naturally would drop off as they didn't feel as comfortable with me because they knew me. 
<clears throat> they're like, well, this is just not jiving with me. And it's totally okay. You know, there doesn't have to be this resentment. Do I have to drop all my family members and friends? No, not, not, not at all. I think naturally people will fall away that don't match where you are now, the frequency you are at now. And then the new people will be attracted to like minds attract like minds. So people who are more in, in the jive where you are in that frequency, they're just going to connect with you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, one of the, one of the examples I use is to think about, are you more of a thermos thermometer or a thermostat? Mm. And a thermometer is more about measuring the temperature of where you are, right? It's a responsive kind of device, yeah. whereas a thermostat sets the temperature mm -hmm. and adjusts the temperature. And a lot of us kind of navigate the navigate life more like a thermometer, <laughs> which is, you know, we respond to the environment that's around us. But what you're describing is being the thermostat right? You're saying, hey, I'm moving forward. I'm turning up the dial. I'm going to be a little warmer here. I'm going to be more active. I'm going to change my vibration, my energy, and I'm going to show yeah. up differently. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, it might be too hot for some people. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, that's okay. But you will also attract and engage relationships with people who are mm -hmm. more aligned with that new energy. Yeah. And what I found, which is a really fun thing that happens sometimes is some of the people you were close to will actually join you sometimes. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'll be like, I like this. I, I want to get, you know, kicking on what my vision is. What can I do to grow as a person? And sometimes you can actually, um, what's the word when you, um, get people excited, um, engaged, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Oh, you, you want them just, to just uh, attracting them or energizing them. Or, um, you know. Oh my God, I can't think of the word right now, but you, you get them excited to want to go on their own journey of growth. Motivate yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Motivate them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fill well, the word time with me. <laughs> and and I, I just want to say that, you know, having a vision and achieving that, whether it's being a bodybuilder or a teacher or whatever it is, or next, it could be the next level of progression in your own career mm -hmm. that gives you more financial freedom and more personal time freedom to do the kinds of things you want to do. Achieving that, that kind of thing is great, right? And it feels good. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, really, is that you see yourself as the kind of person who can achieve your goals. Yeah. And other people see you as that too, mm -hmm. right? Just use just what you just said, that motivating impact. Mm -hmm. It's like the, you know, the classic example of dropping, dropping a rock in the pond and there's ripples out. Mm -hmm. And you're the rock that's creating those ripples out and touching other people and they get motivated and they start to change and then they will impact the people around them to change. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, it's, it's empowering all of the people around you to improve and make a better life for themselves. And I'm just a believer that any one person doing this. So, you know, if you're yeah. listening, this can be you, you can be the start of this, yeah. taking that positive step forward. And it's going to just have ripple effects through all sorts of people in your life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have a friend who wanted to be a teacher. And so she started with being a teacher in high school. And that was great. And then she said, I want to grow and teach college students now. So she went and got her master's. She wrote a thesis. She became a doctor. And now she's a professor. Um, but it was a it was a journey. And, and now she sees herself. I am doctor, professor, you know. And so, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't have to. What I love about this journey of vision, it doesn't just end. I have the vision. All right, now you reach it. What's the next vision? It, it, uh it doesn't have to end. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And, you know, back to this, back to where we started, which is how do you create a vision? Uh, just to recognize as you're thinking about a vision, it's going to evolve, mm -hmm. right? So as long as it's something that's moving you in a direction that you like, it feels yeah. good, it feels exciting, you get that kind of internal experience we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier. Yeah. That's what you're looking for. It doesn't have to be right on. No. You know, when, the, when NASA sent astronauts to the moon, they were never on course all the way to the moon. They were never on course because they were always a little bit off this way, a little bit off that way. And they adjusted, right? It's like, well, okay, we're not quite on course, steer this way, steer that way. And it's the same thing with, with you and with your vision. You're never exactly on course. You make adjustments as you go. And that's, that's part of the journey. Yeah, that's so true because life is ever evolving. And what's great about a vision is that, okay, I'm here, but I want to go further. I want to be deeper. I want to go in a slightly different twinge direction. What's great about it is as you tweak, and it doesn't mean you're messing up. It just means you're growing and you're like, okay, I was here, but now if I just tweak a little this way, I get more and greater vision that expands and makes me more excited to pull out more of my gifts and talents. Yeah. I think what yeah. you just said is super important. And it's this, it's reframing some of the stories that have been taught to us or that we believe for whatever reason. For example, if I change my mind, I'm doing something wrong. Um, you know, it's like for some reason, changing your mind kind of has a bad rap, which, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense because 
as you learn and grow, you're learning and growing. You know things that you didn't know before. And so changing your mind is totally natural because you've got a new perspective, you've got new knowledge, and you're going to use that new perspective and new knowledge to make adjustments, which is a smart thing to do rather than arbitrarily stick to a decision you made before you knew all of that. Absolutely. It's a never growing journey to think, like I, I said earlier, that it's just, it's not, oh, I reached pinnacle success and it's all over. It's like, it'll be a life journey of, how, you know, growing and growing and growing as a person. And this has been fascinating. We could go on for hours. I know we could, Rusty, but where do people find out more about you, connect with you, work with you? How can they do that? Yeah, two, two of the best ways are one is on my website. Uh, you can find me on my website, which is Silicon Valley Dream Builders. It's svdreambuilders.com. Uh, is the name of my company. Again, svdreambuilders.com, all one word. Also on LinkedIn, Rusty Gaylord on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn regularly. It's my main social network. Uh, I work with a lot of business people, so you'll find me there. Uh, just look me up and uh, yeah. tell me you saw me here, and I'd love to connect with you. That, that would be fabulous. I know a lot of people out there were like, how do I get started? Well, get started today by contacting Rusty at S and Sam via the Victor dreambuilders.com. Thank you so much, Rusty, for coming to Savvy Broadcasting today. Thanks, Christine. It was great. It was awesome. Thank you. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.